Hello and welcome to the QSR Pro Getting Started video series. On this video we're going to talk about recording your first script. Here I have QSR Pro open and I'd like to record my first script. So from the toolbar menu I'll select record new script. Here QSR Pro has given a default name to my script but I'd like to change it to something more meaningful, something that will let me know what the script does. Here I'm just evaluating the product so I'll call it eval script. Next, I need to tell the script which application to record against. This information is contained in the application repository in QSR Pro. My application is not in this list yet, so I need to add it. So the first thing I'll do is I'll click on New. The types available are Browser for web applications, Windows for Windows executable, and Java for a Java jar file or executable. Mine's a web application, so I'll select Browser and provide a URL. I'll let QSR Pro create the repository variable URL root, and we'll talk about that in a future video. I need to give this entry in the application repository a meaningful name. I'll call it WYSIWORP, and I'll leave the version as 1.0. QSR Pro allows you to test multiple versions of your application. I'll leave this in the local repository and will not provide a password at this time, so I'll click OK. So now I'm ready to record. So KWISR Pro launches a browser, uses the URL I provided, and now I can start recording. So here I log into the WYSIWORP report about page. As I interact with these controls, KWISR Pro is capturing their properties. This will allow KWISR Pro to bind to those controls when I play back the script. Here I'll enter the description of the bug and information about my very outdated computer. The last thing I'll do here, I will close the browser. And since I'm done recording, I'll click on stop. So now QSR Pro is taking information that it captured during the record session. Here you can see it capture all the various controls from my application for Windows and 20 controls. And it's going to add them to the application repository, to that entry that I added when I started the record process. So I'll save those controls to the application repository. And now my script is being built. As you can see, steps are grouped. At the top we have information about the script. The next set of groupings are based on the windows. So all steps that are related to a specific window are grouped together. If we look at the application repository and we expand version 1 of WYSIWORP, we can see the four windows that it added. And if I expand one of these windows, you can see the controls that it added. Because of how my application is written, QWISR Pro was not able to detect the control names. It has given them generic names like edit box 1, edit box 2, and so forth. Depending on how, you, how your application is written, QSO Pro may be able to identify the names that were given during the development process. Keep in mind that you can update the control names and QSO Pro will automatically update the scripts. Now let's look at the script. At the top we see the set contest command which tells QSO Pro which application to connect to and run application will launch that application. In my case it will launch the browser using the URL. I provided. Next, we interact with the login page, and here's where I enter the first name, use the tab key to get to the password field, and enter the password. Now, the tab key press event is not needed. As I mentioned before, QWISR Pro will use the control properties to bind to that control. So I'm going to get rid of this step by clicking on the delete key. Next, we go to the next form where I enter my first name, last name, and so forth. And here, I also use the tab key a couple of times to get to the controls. Again, I don't need this, so I'm going to delete them. As we go down the script, we can see how I interacted with the various text boxes. Here I selected uh, values from a few combo boxes. And once we get here to step 19, we can see an outline block. So let's expand it. And it looks like it's a low level command. I see a low, uh, left mouse down and a left mouse up, basically a mouse click. And generally, you do not want to use low level commands because they depend on mouse coordinates. So if you're relying on mouse coordinates and the control changes location or you change your resolution, that will break your script. 
So ideally, you'd like to not use low-level commands. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multi-select the entire outline block, and I'm going to comment it out. Then I'm going to play back the script, and if the script breaks, I know I need them, and I'll uncomment them out. If the script works, then I know I can just go ahead and delete them. So let's continue. Here for edit box 7, I see three steps. So it looks like I did some type text, and then I did the backspace key, and enter more text. So this is where I type the text, realize I made a mistake, I hit the backspace key, and finish typing the text. I don't need to do that when I play back the script, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, step 27 and 28 and delete them. And using the edit in place feature in the keyword view and keyword or pearl, I'll just go ahead and type in the right text and get it right the first time. And the last step here on the last window is to close the window. And it's always a good idea to close the application or the browser, that way next time you record on the next script or when you play it back, it would have the application already running and cause unexpected results. So I'm going to save my script and let's play it back and see, see how it goes. So he launches the browser and uses the URL. And now it's logging me in. So it's filling out the form. And it looks like those low level commands that I commented out were not needed after all. So I can delete them. In the report, I can confirm that the script was successful, said it was a succeeded run. And furthermore, at the bottom, there are no warnings or failures. If you have any more questions about QS or Pro, please visit www.cpan.com and blogs.cpan.com.